Could you uh -huh. start by stating your full name, just some like basic biographical stuff, gotcha. full name, date of birth, and where you were born? All right, Gerald, my name is Gerald Plattenberg. I born in New Orleans, Louisiana. And what did I say? Gerald Plattenberg, born in New Orleans, Louisiana. Date of birth, I was born October the 4th, 1966. Okay. We're the same age. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and tell me a little bit about your family. Did you come from a family of dancers, social aided pleasure club members, musicians, people who were in the culture? Well, no, I came from a practically a family of my mom. She danced, but it wasn't second line. Uh -huh. But where I picked second line dancing up as was in the Desire Project. In night, I won't say probably 19, I won't say probably 1982. They had this group back then that was called Nine Time Steppers. And I never was part of the club, but after watching it so long, I kind of fell in love with it. I always could dance, but never could second line. <laughs> and what kind of dance, though? Well, hip hop, break dance. And when I seen the second line, it's kind of got my attention. So I said, I'm going to try that. And I've been doing it ever since now for, I want to say, uh, 15 years now. And what kind of, you said your mom danced, but didn't second Yeah, my line. mama danced, but she did ballroom dance. There wasn't nothing like second line. Ballroom? Huh? Yeah, what, yeah, she did. What kind of ballroom? Well, I mean, you know, holding the walls is down in New Orleans. We call our barrooms holding the walls. So it was like ho holding oh, the wall dancing. Bar room, bar room. Yeah, 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 yeah right, barroom right. dancing. So it wasn't too much second line, but I kind of got a little bit of that from her. I, I got to give her credit, you know. That's where I really got it from. Mm -hmm. But this so I know a little bit about you as a, a break dancer, mm -hmm. hip hop dancer. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that. You were on the like doing some competitions. Yeah, well, I did a. Uh, the Double ID Talent Show, which is uh, formed in New Orleans, but they don't do it no more. And in 1997, we entered this. Uh, we entered the talent show as Grandmaster Showcase, break dancing group, and we won it that year. And the winner, was the, the uh, grand first prize was a uh, trip to the Apollo, a thousand dollars, which we won that. And we did go to the Apollo in 1997, and we won twice on it. And you won the Apollo competition? Yeah, we won, the, we won it twice, yeah. What was the prize for that one? Uh, a thousand dollars, but we had to split that among five of us, so it wasn't too much, but it was better than nothing. Where, was it an all-expense paid trip? Everything was paid, yeah, everything was paid. Well, that's why took care of all that. Mm -hmm. So all we had to do was get our clothes together, but every, mm -hmm. everything, was all, everything else was paid. And the talent show, was it put on by a radio station? Yeah, radio station, that's why I did, FM 98. Uh, based in New Orleans. And where was the talent show? At the Sanger Theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a big, uh, a big stepping stone in my life, you know. Yeah, but you were so that was in 1997. But you said by 1982 you were already. Yeah, I was already dancing, but I wasn't hip hop. I was, uh, I mean, I was doing hip hop, but it wasn't until later in my career that I was able to make it to on, on Apollo. Right, right. Mm. Um, and. Do you think that your uh, like your experience with breakdancing did that influence you? Made it easier. Yeah, yeah, it made it easier. Yeah, it made it easier. Because I mean, if you look at it, second line and breakdance is almost the same thing. You're just not doing a lot of flipping. That's the difference between it. Mm -hmm. Second line is more on your feet. Breakdancing is whatever goes, whatever comes to your mind. On right. your head, on your back. But second line is more on your feet dancing. Right. I guess there is with break dancing you have the up rock, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. The upbeat. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And uh, before you go down the floor. And break dancing is kind of up tempo. Right. 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 Second line is a lower beat, but uh, break dancing is upper tempo music. Mm -hmm. I see you sometimes still the your history as a break dancer is still evident. In the yeah, 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 yeah. Line, right? Yeah, it do. Cause sometimes I get on my head or I do a little split right quick. Uh -huh. So you about you about right? Yeah, you'll do a free, like a freeze on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my chicken chew move. That's that get out my way move. Yeah. Did you get out? Get out. Yeah, get out my way move. You can't touch this. Get out the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tell me about. Um, did you grow? You grew up in the Desire Project. Yeah, Desire all my life. Born and raised Desire Housing Project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there were the Nine Times Steppers. Were there? Yeah, there, there was before Nine Times Social and Pleasure Club. It was Nine Times Steppers. Mm -hmm. Before uh, we converted to nine times. Okay. And um, when did you join the nine times social? I, I joined nine times. It was founded in 92. Mm -hmm. I joined there, I want to say, in 95. After the uh, the founder got killed. And who was the founder? Uh, Louis Pierre. 
and I always promised him I was going to join. I was going to join, and sorry I didn't join before he got killed. But after he got killed, that was my first year in it. Mm -hmm. So it was like three years after the club started, I uh, I joined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many members were in it when you joined? When I joined, it was like five, six members. Now it's grown to 25. Mm -hmm. And was there a ladies division back then? No, it was just the guys first. The ladies came maybe three years afterwards. Okay, so maybe like 98? Yeah, 98 the ladies joined. Mm -hmm. And they've been there ever since now. Mm -hmm. And besides your annual parade, which is a big one, it's when people look forward mm -hmm. to every year, mm -hmm. besides the parade, what else do you all do as a club throughout the year? Well, we believe in kids and family first. We believe in that. So the first thing we have is a Mardi Gras. We, you know, we do our, uh, we do our big cookout on um, Dumain and Claiborne. And we've been doing that for about 15 years now. And it's been, you know, it's been a big draw. And we feed everybody, you know, it don't matter where you're from, who you is. Come over there, get something to eat, we feed everybody. We've been doing that for like 15 years now. And our second event, which is coming up, is for the kids. This is the Easter Egg Hunt. We give a good big Easter Egg Hunt on Samson Park. You know, we give baskets, we give candy, and we also interact with the kids and, you know, give them a, we try to touch, we try to give them, touch out to them, you know, if I kind of see where they're at in, in school, we, we, we discuss a lot of stuff with them, counseling in other words, mm -hmm. and let them know, you know, if y'all want to be part of this, you know, this is what you got to do, and we just try to be positive, give them positive, or lead them in a positive direction, and um, the next thing we do for kids is back to school. We have a back to school giveaway. We give them uh, away book sacks, pencils. You know, we just do a lot. We just try to keep the community, not just a parade like some club. We try to make it a We try to bring the community together. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like you really think about the social aid part of the social aid and pleasure club. Yeah, not just the second line part. You know, some clubs do, but we try to reach out to our community where we're from and just try to give back. We don't have much, but the little bit we do have, we try to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what are one of your f most favorite memories with, of being a part of the nine times, either parading or otherwise? Well, the, f the best part of my life about being part of the nine times was we was elected after Katrina to write a book. And we named the book Coming Out the Door for the Night War. And the book has been a success. I mean, we on our third print now. Wow, this with the Neighborhood Story Project. With right? the Neighborhood Story Project, uh-huh. And you're talking about 30,000 books of print. And we almost out of our third print and she said we only have like maybe 40 books left from that. Wow. So that was my best and that was one of my best and my great experience I had with the club. It was a good experience putting the book together? It was, it was, it was. Yeah. It was, but it was a little work, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it, was it was a little work, it was a lot of writing and trying to go back and find pictures. But I mean, it was amazing how the book turned out to be. Mm -hmm. How everybody was able to track, track old pictures and show people instead of just words. We was able to put old pictures in there and people that know us, they could relate with it. Mm -hmm. Did putting that book together, that experience, have an impact on your group? I think it did. It did because, I mean, it's kind of, it kind of brought us together and some of them kind of got away from it because it started with like 20 of us and at the end of the day it finished with five of us. The dedicated ones? The dedicated ones, yeah. I mean, for somebody to pay you to sit down and tell you about your life story, you couldn't beat that. You know, and I'm glad the five of us that did, we did, because, I mean, we all could have gave up and the book would have never been published, but through the five of us, it was enough to keep it going, and we kept it going. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, you don't have to tell me this if you don't want to, but I'm just curious how it works. Do you continue to get um, some of the money from the book sales every time it's Well, it? we needed to question that because we haven't gotten nothing in about a year, mm -hmm. and I mean, if you started selling books, we just constantly be getting some, but I never really touched. I, mean, I was so blessed for the money that we was awarded. I was kind of satisfied with that. Yeah. So we didn't really uh, pressure too much about, you know, y'all still selling books where the rest of the raw So we kind of just let it went. Um, we were talking a little bit before we turned the camera on about the last year's parade and mm -hmm. the chosen theme of All mm -hmm. Lives Matter, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that and how you all came to, to the decision to have both the, the suits that you designed and mm -hmm. wore mm -hmm. and that theme. Well, when we get our theme from yearly, we sit at the table and we ask each member to have an idea because we believe everybody in the club have an opinion, everybody have a verse. So we sit down and, you know, we had like five choices to make. 
and with the murder rate and the senseless killing going on with the police and the, the community killing the police and the police killing the community senseless, we thought it would be a good idea to do the Black Panther theme. Because, I mean, they wasn't for violence needed, they were for just what was right. You know, and when the police did something wrong, the Black Panthers came together and stood up for it. So we thought that would be a good idea to touch the community, to touch New Orleans, the city that we love, that we are from. And we didn't say black lives matter, we say all lives. That means white, black, or whatever race you was, it didn't matter. If you was mistreated, we was there for you. And so we thought that would be a good theme, and we thought that would get great attention in the city on the crime. And I think it kind of slowed it up a little bit, but it took back up again. But that's where that theme came from, and that's why we use that. Um, on each of your streamers, you had the name of someone that had been an unarmed black person that had been killed by police. Yeah, yeah, we, we did it because uh, we just wanted to let, not only New Orleans, we wanted to let the world know that we in New Orleans, we do care about people. No matter who you're from or where you're at, we do care about people. And we gave each member the option to pick who they choose to wear on their uh, screen or whether it's New Orleans, wherever they're from. And it was good to see a lot of people pick people from our out of state, you know. But a lot of us had people locally. Because, I mean, we do have a lot of, you know, we have trouble ourselves in the city. We have to get under wraps. Um, and we were we were just talking about too before we turned the camera on that um, there's a, a short like a five minute film about that parade uh, that's on airing on MTV right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, that's, so you haven't seen it. Right? No, I haven't seen it, but I heard about it. You know, I, and like I say, I, I guess by me being part of it, I ain't I don't be too jumpy about seeing stuff because you know I'm part of a Ken Folks Brass Band too, and we do a lot of weddings. Yeah, we do a lot of weddings locally every weekend, so I'm kind of over the. The, the this TV thing, you know, because we didn't did uh, the Bachelor, we recorded the Bachelor, we didn't been on Jimmy Kimball, you know, we didn't been on CSI New Orleans. I mean, you know, I've done been around the film a lot, so I guess that's why I wouldn't push it too pushy about seeing it, but it is something I would love to see. Um, are you a part of the Kim Folk Brass Band as a Grand, Grand Marshal? Correct, I'm the head Grand Marshal. Mm -hmm. And you gig with them a lot. A lot, yeah, because I mean, they're one of the hottest bands in the city right now. When I tell you almost 30 gigs a weekend, that's what they're doing. 30 gigs a weekend? A weekend. How many do you do? I do, uh, out of that 30, I might do 15 or 10 of them. Wow. Yeah, so it's a blessing for me. Yeah, so that's like another source of income. That is. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah. Uh, and that's in addition to, you also work a day job. Two jobs. Two jobs. Bourbon Orleans and Coda Two Sisters. Wow. Which one I'm about to uh -huh. let one of them go, just a little bit too much. You know, you, you push your body as far as it can go. And I think I went to the limit, so it's time to tone down a little bit. Yeah, well, and on top of that, I mean, you're at Second Lines every Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. I make I make everything. I make everything work out. You know, I, I push myself, but, uh, you know, I try to cover all bases. I mean, at home, everywhere. I try to, mm -hmm. you know, touch everybody, put it like that. Yeah. Um, so, this might seem like a silly question, but it's a very basic question. Mm -hmm. Why do you belong to a social aid and pleasure club? Why do you second line? What drives you to dance? Well, for one, this well, for one, I'm not stuck on self. I'm not selfish, so to be part of a, a group of guys that I might could touch and might could get together and have fun with, I think that's always good. Because I mean, it's easy for me to put a parade up by myself and carry, but I think it's best to be part of an organization, you know. So and I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I chose nine times because I mean I'm from the night wall. So that was the easy choice to make right there. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're, when you're out uh, either, you know, at the club or at a parade, and when you're really feeling the music, dancing, you know, in your element, what does it feel like? Well, I mean, that's a feeling that each individual have to experience because, I mean, you know, I couldn't describe it, but I tell you, it's a... It's a good feeling. I mean, I don't drink, I don't smoke, so that's my way of relieving a lot of anger within me, and that's, I, that's how I express myself in dancing. But it's a, I'm telling you, once you get to love it, once you get to like it, you'll learn to love it. Mm. Um, you know, some people kind of describe the feeling of, like you said, like releasing your anger. Mm -hmm. What it feels like, it's almost like a, um, like a spiritual experience? Yeah, I think I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah I think it is. I think it's very spiritual. You know, because I mean, 
everybody, you, it's something you feel. And like I said, you can't teach second line dancing, either you got it or you don't. Because I mean, if you could teach it, I think I'd be the best teacher in the city, but I just can't see, see no kind of way to teach it, but I wish I could. But it, I think it is a spiritual movement, you know. Signature move, something that you kind of like identify as like the Plattenberg style. Well, I couldn't really tell you because I do so many moves so quick I can't keep up with them. But I think when I get on my head, I think that's my signature move because I think that's a move nobody can duplicate. Mm -hmm. Don't even attempt to duplicate. <laughs> so I have to say the head when I get on my head, do the head stand. Do you call it anything? No, I never named it. I never named it. But I, I, since you brought it to my attention, I think I got to find a name for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, I'll be I'll be listening to hear if I hear anybody talk say that about name. It. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but I think I need to get a name for it cause so everybody cool. like it and they know that's my thing. But I never decide to name it. But I gotta find out a name for it. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever? I've never seen you do this, but have you ever climbed up on rooftops or anything? Oh, I did my share that. I did my share that. Yeah, but I had a close call with that uh, two years ago now parade. I kind of climbed on a scaffold. And one of the boats kind of fell off the scaffold and I almost slipped. So I promised myself after that experience, I never do it again. I never climb on nothing again. Everything two feet off the ground. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you probably won't ever see that anymore. No yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. It looks, it looks yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're on your own. You know, ain't no insurance. That's you on your, you're at your own risk out there. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think I'd never do that again. Hmm. Uh, you said a minute ago that you can't teach second language. And I wish I could. Oh, well, I have, I'd have been at this class. Again, Right? Yeah, I don't you, think so. You personally or just in general, it can't be taught? I don't think that can't be taught. Mm -hmm. Terry Lynn saying she going to uh, try to put something together, but I mean, that's the dance that you got to, that's got to be in you. Do people come to you and ask for your Always, guidance? always, what always. Tell I tell them I'll, I'll, I'll try to show you something, but I can't promise you. But I do tell them I'll try to show them because I'm like I told you, I'm not selfish. So I don't mind passing it on because it was passed to me, but it wasn't taught to me. It was, pa it was passed to me by watching it and seeing it. And the doors opened to me by the club accepting me, but it was never taught to me. So I don't, you know, like I said, I wish I could. And maybe I need to try it, try it, because I never really tried it either. So you can't say what you can't do until you try it. I never really tried it. So maybe I need to try it and maybe I can teach it, but I don't really think so. When it was being passed to you, were there any people that you really looked up to or admired their dancing and wanted to? Yeah, there was a couple of people. Uh, Joe Black with a uh, revolution. Raymond William, that's a member of my club, and uh, Raphael Parker, that's a member of my club too, and they kind of had their own little style of dancing, so I did kind of pattern and watch some of the moves they made. And I got to say, Squirky Man, Is he the hands down, I, touch? hands down, I think he's the best in the city. I tell him that all the time, you know. Is he still living? He's still living, but he's not. You know, he got that drug thing. He can't can't shake that drug problem. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I think he's the best in the city, and. I wish I had some of the skills he had, because he is bad. And the stuff he do, you can take it to Las Vegas and make some real money with it. Right, right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, I, in the past or now, like, did you ever practice your footwork or your moves like outside of the parade or the club? Never did. No? Never did. Once I hear that music, wherever it's at, I'm up and doing it. It don't matter. But far as me at home practicing, no, never did. Matter of fact, I don't even listen to second, second line music at all. You don't? No, I don't. Really? I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't. So the only time I get hit is when I'm out. Because uh -huh. I think anything you hear too much, I think after a while it get boring to you. Mm -hmm. It's like CDs. People buy CDs and after they hear the song three, four times since they got it, they don't want to hear it no more. So I don't think it would be a good idea to listen to it all day. Mm -hmm. But I love it when I do hear it. Mm -hmm. And are there any particular songs that's like, oh, that's my song when you hear it? Well, some of them that move me, mm -hmm. but I love them all, but it is two or three that, that really move me. Mm -hmm. What are they? Uh, be honest with you, I couldn't tell you the name. I just like the beat. You know how they... You know yeah, I know, how, I know it when I hear it, yeah. <laughs> you don't know the names because you no. know the CDs. Yeah, shame, shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to know the names. You just got to know what they sound No, it moved me, though. It moved me when it, it, it moved me, and, and that's all that matter, you know. Do you have any favorite bands, either right now or in the past? Well, you know, I'm a TBC. I, I, I love Rebirth. Mm -hmm. 
but Reber kind of got out the scene a lot, so I, I'm favoring TBC now. And I go hit him every Wednesday, so, you know, you learn to love what you hear a lot. So that's, where I, that's my favorite band right now, TBC. And when you go out to, uh, you know, TBC on Wednesday, it seems like for the last, what, five, seven years? It's been a minute. It's been yeah, a minute. That's what yeah, that's like. They had a long, they had a long uh, run. The weekly event for people who love to dance. Who love right? to dance, correct. There you go. Yeah, including yourself. Yes, that is. <laughs> <Together there a lot. laughs> yeah. Um, and how does second lining at the club compare to second lining at parades, in your opinion? Well, I mean, it's the same thing because you still get audience. You got people to come to come in there just to see the dancing. And I mean, some people are touched by the dancing, so some of them need that touch too. And I guess because I mean, there's no difference in it. Parade just be more people, but in celebration hall, you still have that crowd of people. That's watching. So I think it's when you, anytime you suck line, I think it's, it's a parade. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah. Um, you know, I always notice when we're in the club that it's really, you can do, or I find at least, I have a lot more freedom to do a lot more things with my feet since I don't have to move forward. But at the same time, you don't have that like playfulness of, you know, interacting the crowd. with the environment. With the crowd. With the Correct. And all the cars and the, you know, all the stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, a, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difference, but uh, it don't seem no difference to me because, like I said, you still got that same feel of people that's going, if they like it, they're going to come reach out to you, touch it. So I think it's just the same thing. Mm -hmm. You just don't have the environment as far as the food and you don't have the enthused people pushing you, yeah. just, just striving you to, you know, to keep going and stuff. Right. But they're close to the same. And when you go to the parade, do you have a particular like, place in the profession that you like to dance, like to be when you're dancing? We're always on the side of the band. Which side? The side, i say the right hand side. The sidewalk side? Yeah, sidewalk side. On huh? the sidewalk or close, or close to the band? Close to the band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why do you prefer that spot? Any reason? No reason, but it just, I've been accustomed to doing it for so many years, I couldn't tell you the reason, but I've been doing it for a while, so. I just think that's a my that's my comfort zone for me. And how do you keep your energy? You said you don't drink, you don't smoke. Like how do you keep your energy up the whole time? Music. Yeah, it's the music. It's the beat. You know, it's amazing how I do it. I couldn't tell you, but it's amazing how it's been done. Cause I don't know where I get the strength from myself. Now, sometime on my second line date, I get short winded. But during the regular parades, I'm all right. So I don't know why is that. That's what I've been trying to find myself. Why? I guess cause it's the Emotion, and I guess it's the the drive, you know. When you know people coming out to see you, and you it's your turn to put on the show for four hours. I mean, them four hours go quick too. Well, yeah, and you put yourself to do. I mean, a lot, a lot. I mean, yeah, you, you put a lot on yourself. But on your on your on day. your day, yeah, yeah. You got to go over and be on the call. Right. They look for that, you know. Yeah, people will not will not stand for it. Yeah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't if you don't show up and show out. They they would tell you. Yeah. You know so. Is, 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 is I guess, and I guess that's what it is. You burn a lot of energy on just the, 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 the drilling, you know? Yeah. The rush, knowing you got to put on, you got to perform. Regular parade, you do. If you don't, you don't. But on your day, it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a special drive you got to have. And I think I start that drive up two, three months till. I start getting that fear. My day coming, my day coming. I think it's just adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And what kind of preparations are going on in those couple of months as it's getting closer? Well... Whatever clothes we're going to wear, we got to make sure we have that. Whatever shoes we're going to wear, we got to make sure we get them ordered and have them in on time. Whatever de decoration we're going to wear, excuse me, we got to make sure, oh, excuse me, we got to make sure we get the people uh, on it. Everything is with money. As mm -hmm. long as the money right, everything going to be right. But it's always the money, you know. That's something I think if people aren't familiar with social and pleasure clubs and how they work with people, I don't know, coming from out of town, maybe mm -hmm. see a parade. They really don't understand they the don't. finances, the financial obligations of people who belong to those clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the thing I like about my club is we don't shoot for the moon. What I mean by that is we don't try to outdo nobody. We don't try to get the two, three thousand dollar shoes. We try to keep it within budget in everybody's budget. Somewhere something you can live with. And that's why our club been having so many members and it's been so successful for so long. Because we try to reach everybody needs. Keep it reasonable, you know. We don't try to make it high where you can't afford to do it. We try to keep it within reach of everybody and keep it simple. Mm -hmm. But the whole key to anything is 
voting and most votes win and once you do that I think anything you do with a group of people are gonna be all right and a lot of people get out of there but that's a fast way to do that bring it to the table and vote on it and as long as you do that I think your club a lot of clubs will last a long time mm -hmm. instead of one or two people making ideas right you know right so everybody feels like their voice is heard their voice is heard yeah everybody's voice matter you know mm -hmm. and that's what worked for us been working right um you've been doing this a long time what, have you seen changes in the Second Line culture since you've been a part of it? Well, the only changes I see is the, the clothes. Before the dancing, the routes, I mean, everything has been going as planned. It's just the, 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 um, the decorations have changed a lot. You know, everybody got a little fancy, and like I said, that's the only thing, but it's, it's no right or wrong thing. Whatever you decide to do is what you do. Like people are spending more money, you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, right there, fam. But the, you think it stayed the same? Yeah, definitely. The, the dancing don't change. You know, you can look at it, you can study it years and years ago, you're going to see the same style. Mm -hmm. It's just different people doing it, but it's the same style of dancing. You know, that second line, and that's something can't be duplicated. Right. You know, you might have different moves from everybody, but at the end of the day, it's the same style. Mm -hmm. um. What do you enjoy most about being, being a part of the Second Line community? Not, like, not just even your club specifically, but just being part of the, of the culture. Well, I mean, I mean, I've seen the culture at its worst, and I think now it's getting a little better because more clubs are interacting with each other. So I, I kind of like that, you know. At its worst is when people were. Yeah, when people were divided and whatever walled you from. I'm saying with the Indians, you know, mm -hmm. it was divided at one time, but as time went on, they grew to fellowship with each other. So fellowship together, so that has brought a lot of the clubs together. So I think that's made it better. And it's positive, you know, and, and it makes people want to join something positive. Mm -hmm. and what role does dancing have in your life? You've kind of already answered this, but I'm just going to ask it a slightly different way. What role does second lining and dancing in particular, or dancing and second lining in particular, have in your life? That's the driving force of my life right now because, I mean, like I say, I don't um, drink smoke, so it's the way I solve a lot of problems and it's the way I feel relaxed and the way I feel comfortable about me. So, I mean, it's a driving force in my life. Without that, I don't know. Can if something happened to my legs, I couldn't imagine, you know, how would I move on? I couldn't tell you. I can imagine. You would just put that footwork in, like, your upper body. Some kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I move it to my arms, huh? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You should figure out how to stand on your head. I can imagine. Yeah, I try, but uh, it'd be a life I wouldn't look forward to. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a blessing to have your health and strength and you know, everything intact and able to entertain people. Because my dancing touch a lot of people, you know, and uh, and I go tell people if I if that's you know my dancing make you happy, you're gonna get it every time you see me, you know. But uh, it do touch a lot of people. Though. A lot of people tell me that, young and old, you know. Man, every time I watch you, you make me want to dance. You make me feel alright. You make me so. I mean, it's it's a blessing, you know. Something special gift I was blessed with. We all have them. Some people don't search themselves to find out what it is, but I searched myself and I found out that's what it was dancing. When you know when you're dancing, it's so it's just so clear that it I enjoy makes you it. So happy, yeah, that yeah. You enjoy it, and it's like it's contagious. Yeah, yeah, it, it grows on people. Yeah, it grows on people. Cause I mean, I make people dance even when they don't want to dance. They see me, they'll try. And to see the children come up to me and tell me that, you know, it really touched me. And like I said, I wish I could teach it, you know. Cause I mean, you got to pass it on to them. If we don't, the culture gonna die. So we got to invest in the kids some kind of way. But that's something new we got this year. We got a kids division. You did this past year? This, you no, the year coming in. You're coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. nine time kids, yeah. So right. so we start we getting on the right track with that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, listening to you talk about that, it makes me think one of the things I've been talking to people about and thinking about is this the words that are in the names of these clubs, right? That we belong to, mm -hmm. social aid and pleasure. Mm -hmm. And this idea of pleasure, like what does that mean to people? Like, how you know, like, where is the pleasure in all of this? Yeah, yeah. And for you, like, do, do you have any associations with that word, or what does it make you think about, or what is the pleasure? In all well, of I feel the pleasure is what you pass on to people, what people get out of it, and not selfish, because I mean, it'd be selfish to, to have pleasure in yourself. So I think the pleasure is how people, how you, how you perceive the people, how people take, you know, how you take on the community. You know, and I think that's the pleasure part, being appreciative, appreciative and, and giving back to the community. That's our pleasure. That's the pleasure we get out of seeing kids happy. Mm. You know? It's so interesting you say that because the way you describe it, it sounds like that's the social aid part, but it's not like they're separate, right? No, it's like it's the same thing. Yeah. Socializing means socializing with people. 
Pleasure mean enjoying people, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So it comes together, you know. But we we serious about it. So I mean, a lot of clubs don't, but we serious about, you know, bringing the bringing the community together and bringing the want to see kids happy, make kids happy. Right. right. You know? Well, and you do that through all of the events that you describe. Yeah. But you personally, I mean, and the people in your club too. But you personally also bring people yourself and people pleasure through your dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll end with this question that I ask everybody I interview mm-hmm. um, in your own words um, what is second life yeah in my words or to me because I can't speak for other people I can speak for me mm-hmm. to me it's just a, it's a free time for you to relieve all your stress all your anger I ain't gonna really say second line, I say second line dancing. Okay. What I get out of it is fun, pleasure, happiness, joyous times, and just seeing other people smile means a lot to me. That's my meaning of second line. Is there anything else about any of this stuff that you'd like to add that I didn't ask about or we didn't get to? Well, I think you covered. Uh, I think you covered that in some. I'm just <laughs> glad I was able to answer it clearly and truthfully. Oh, you, you know, know what? I lied. There is one more thing I wanted to ask you about. Is we talked about your break dancing competitions, but you've also been in some footwork competitions too, right? Yeah, I have. I have, but I didn't really compete because I, I'm blessed for as money wise. So I wanted to let people that was less fortunate. I just got in it to be for have fun with it, but I didn't get in a competition. Yeah, I remember talking with um, Taranika Smith. Yeah, he said you two. It got down to just the two of you, mm-hmm. and you. They gave you the. They decided you were the winner, but she mm-hmm. was so touched that you gave her the money, the cash prize. Yeah, I did. I did. So you know, I ain't lying. I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. That. So you know, I ain't lying. I mean, people talk to people. Uh-huh. Everybody don't tell the truth, but you know, that's that's just who I am. Yeah. You know, you got to give back in any kind of way you can. And uh, I mean, I was glad I was able to do that. And that's why I told you. I didn't really get in it. I just wanted to have fun with it. Mm-hmm. And exercise myself, too. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got a question. You got a question? Okay. So, nine times mm-hmm. from the ninth ward. Uh-huh, correct. Is there any other meaning to the number nine for y'all? No, not really. I it, think of cats have nine lives. Mm-hmm. And when you're saying nine, nine times, yeah, nine yeah. Times, you know, mm-hmm. I was just wondering if there was any other. No, no meaning, no, no meaning behind it like that. Okay. But I mean, since you brought that to my attention, I might have to do some research on that to the club <laughs> and really find out where it really came from. Because I mean, not too many people pick names something that don't have a meaning behind it. True. But far as I know, to my knowledge, it just was a name since us being out the night walk. Cause it never was nine members. I can say if it was nine of us, but it was always five or more. But where the name really come from, I couldn't really tell you. If there's a meaning behind it, I don't really think so. I think it was just a name they came up with and it sounded good and they went with it. Because I joined them three years ago and it was established three years before I joined. But I'm going to research that and let you know if I find out it what it was. In your book. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Because we did name the book coming out the door for the night walk. Right. Yeah. Right. So we did that for the community. Yeah. And when I tell you they show love, they share with love. Yeah, everything we did, they was there. I just have this vision that next year they're going to come out in cat suits or something. <laughs> no, I don't know. We, this year we're coming out, we, it's undecided right now. Now they wanted to do the Mexican theme because we've been doing themes. Oh, yeah. They wanted to do the Mexican the theme. One. Yeah, we did the Irish. Yeah, we did oh, the okay. Irish. Yeah, we did the Irish. Uh huh. Yeah, the kills. We did the kills one year. When I tell you that, she had to sit it down. Oh, yeah. It was hard for anybody to come behind that. Yeah, they weren't ready for that. It was, it was. It was. We took it to a whole nother level with that in. Couldn't nobody touch it. They like, right. man, y'all shut it down with that. Uh-huh. Nobody would have never thought of that. Men with skirts on. Mm-hmm. And we coordinated, I mean, it was beautiful. We coordinated it so well. You know? You never seen it? Oh no, I've been to Nine Oh yeah. I didn't go that one. Okay. Yeah, it was I don't think I got nothing in my phone, but it was a uh, that was that was a good year. We got a lot of rave reviews from that, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. A lot of people was like, What? Mm-hmm. Look, man, no they not. Yeah, we got yeah, yeah we got how, how do people receive the, the Black Panther. Oh, they received that well too because we came out together uh, with our arms like we came out unity. They received it well. 
Yeah, that went good. That went good too. Were there people who you know come to your parade who remembered the activity of the Black Panthers in the Desire Project? Some, some people did. did. Some people did. Yeah. Some people did. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did ourselves. Yeah. Some of us remember it. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't remember their time because I was a baby during their time, but I do have history on it. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So that was a good thing too. And like I said, it came at a time where the world, not just New Orleans, the world was going through that. Because, I mean, they was killing, senseless killing all over. Just pulling people over and shooting them for no reason. They only had a phone in hand. So we thought that was a time to touch. But New Orleans needed to be touched, too. So we did it more for the city than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But the MVTV thing, I, I, I'm dying to see that, though. I've never seen that yet. Yeah, yeah, I bet. I mean, I haven't seen it on TV. I just saw Lily sent me the, you know, yeah. <coughs> the video on, clipping. The, inter yeah, yeah, the, clipping. on the internet or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. so. All right, guys. I'm good. All right. We'll go back All right. to the camera. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right, I'll be looking out for that, uh, to hear about your, your name, your name stamp on your headstand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah, to put something together. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to name it, but I got to name it something. Oh. I never thought about